You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. And hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 169 of the Daily Beaver morning show here on the Crier Media Network. Today, pre-recording day is Saturday, July 22nd, and this is for rebroadcast on Monday, July 24th, 2023. So just a few days uh, of time travel this time, kiddies. Um... If the weather network is correct, it should be a sunny day here at the Beaver Lodge today, the day you're watching, not the day I'm recording, but it's a sunny day here too, just to keep things in order. <laughs> I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, he, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly, and we are delighted beyond words that you, dear kids, have chosen to give us the gift of your attention today. Um... Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, the Pepper Masters, the Pepper Master. Sorry, there's only one. There's only one. I I I, I deserve whatever I get. Sorry. Um, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com for their kindness and continued support. Um, well. Let's hope we're all freshly topped up on some coffee or whatever it is that gets you started. Hey there, Mr. Grizzly. How's your mental health today? Hey, Mr. Beaver. Uh, mental health is pretty good. You're, I just noticed your mic flag is, it's been rotated a bit. Just twist it, twist it. Other way. Yeah, that way. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, bring it on. Bring it on home. Bring it on home. Bring it on home. Perfect. There, there we go. go. I don't know what happened. I just I just looked up and I go, oh, I'm looking I, at the bottom of it. Like, elevate stuff because i realized at one point when my i don't know it's like when i because my chair keeps on sinking on its own mm, mm, right. i guess i had set it at a level where i was sort of in between so every time i'd raise it up i it was like too low and then every time it would sink it would be like too high like it looked like it was up my nose <laughs> well, you're, you're looking a little blurry this morning um check check your settings sir and your camera setting on the video is it, oh, has I, it been lowered to 480p? It should be 1080p at least. Uh, it says, nope, full high definition, 1080. Huh. Maybe it's just the feed. Yeah, that may yeah. be because you're crystal clear and I'm crystal clear on my feed. So Yeah, 
Uh, oh, there, it's clearing up. It's slowly clearing up. So I guess it's pushing the gremlins out of the system. It happens. Gotcha. You know, it happens. Gremlins be gone. <laughs> Even when we're doing a recorded version, which we do, by the way, the recorded versions, for those of you who are watching, we do it live, no cuts, yes. no takes. It's live, yes. one straight shot, just as if it was a live stream. The only difference is it's just recorded because, you know, Mr. Beaver won't be available today and tomorrow which is because. Monday and Tuesday when these air. So Because, 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 because. You're going camping. I'm going camping. <laughs> are, are, you, are you the camping queen? Yeah, actually. Actually, yeah. Uh, now, of course, you know, the queen is 50, so it's a little more glamping than camping. Well, it's glamping, of course. I, yes. mean, I, let, let's, I mean, let's get realistic, right? We're not. No, no, but roughing it anymore yeah like this but the, the queen can rough it the queen can rough it the queen can do mm. sleeping bag on the ground if the queen has to <laughs> right just but why 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 suffer? just why why suffer? yes yes because i have done it um but no this one uh fortunately we uh we have a we had a camping site without electricity so that was fine we were going to handle that that's no problem but we were able to get one uh so that means uh there will be yes camping and yes we will be cooking outside and yes we'll be using some of the fire and stuff but uh we get to get uh some gourmet stuff and the inflatable mattress gets to come and <laughs> and yeah so um this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Uh, so it's going to be good food, uh, some some hiking, uh, hopefully a canoe uh, to hopefully go out the on the lake. No yep, and uh, and just to, yeah, just to get get away and unplug for a bit. So that'll be nice. So I'm very much looking oh, yeah. forward to it. And then uh, yesterday, uh, my beaver sweetie surprised me uh, with an activity. What's that? It appears we are going to Stratford. In oh, for the yep, yep. He he really, really, really wanted to see King Lear, and we both love Rent, and they're both playing. So I was trying to see if we could like fit in Spam a lot as well because I would have loved to see that. But maybe Rich Sweetie said, "I think three in two days might be a little much, especially with two musicals." And it's like, honey, mm -hmm. like two me two musicals. Have you met me, darling? <laughs> I can do two musicals. He can. <laughs> so guess who got that gene? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, but yeah, Stratford. So uh, last, last year we really wanted to go because uh, I wanted to see Chicago. And uh, uh, I think it was uh, Macbeth that was on. And uh and we couldn't make it happen. So um, he said, okay, yeah, we're getting the tickets early. But this is like last night, mm -hmm. like around 1030 at night. It's like, do you want to go to Stratford? It's like, Who I'm doesn't? getting ready to go to bed. <laughs> so rather searching. Oh, comparing right to now. <laughs> yeah, we, oh, we did it right now. We did it right um, now. No, I mean, you didn't go to Stratford right no, now. No, 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 <laughs> right now. But yeah, instead of going going straight to bed, we spent the next hour and a half researching and <laughs> making travel plans. Okay. And then we went to bed. We, we have a weird household. Yeah. Somehow I it works. I can see that. Somehow. I have a graphic for you, sir. I got to show sure you this. You'll, you'll like this. You'll like this. This just came across my feed. Um. This, this is too good not to share. Okay. Barney Nofsky's best intentions. Love him. Mr. Speaker, I can assure you I had no idea that $37,000 legal bill I paid was to help the whistleblower who, as luck would have it, took Patrick Brown out of the CPC leadership race. I was told by an unnamed and untraceable CPC intern it was the bill for my LASIK surgery. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so fitting, right? Like my name's not Gordy. That's who. Uh, that's who we're talking about here. My oh, name's no, not Gordy. Barney no. Panofsky's best intentions. At my Barney, name's not Gordy. Barney, you if you do follow watch, him. write us. Write us if you do. <laughs> please. Yes, I, re I we would I love to love to talk. 
Yeah, I reached out to him like when we were really, really, really fledgling. So maybe it's like, who the hell are you? But or something. I don't know. Or you don't see it. I mean, a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's, it, who knows, right? Well, I mean, he, he has a popular he, account, so I mean, very you know, popular. Yeah, yeah. eighty-six thousand, eighty-seven thousand followers, basically. So it, exactly, like we're going to about like one thousand three hundred. I can actually take time to go through and actually say hi to everyone. I don't think he might. When, when your following's <laughs> that big, it's pretty hard, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, he. Um, but yeah, I because every whenever he has like his end of the week thing. Oh, they're brilliant! Like, or his his premiere letters. Yes, <laughs> but like the end of the week thing, right? Just like what what I learned on Twitter, like it's the moment on Twitter the of, the week, of the week. I, other than your your jazz shows, that that I live for because it's like <laughs> like no matter it's like you don't have to have read a word yet; you just have to see the title. And you know it's going to be good. <laughs> well, you it, just know. <laughs> if you click on his his bio, he, he describes himself as a former progressive conservative specializing in delivering satirical irony through interpretive dance since June 2018. If anyone orders Merlot, I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> and he, he, he lives in Tirana. That would be Toronto for people. Toronto. Tirana. Oh my God. So, but here, here's the thing, right? Because again, I know we are not supposed to. I, I know, I know we're not supposed to. I know, I know, I know. But I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't help we're only it human. because, but because it's just so inauthentic. It's mm -hmm. just so inauthentic. So, Mister Grizzly, like, just because you have to, you, you just have to. And my wife says I look better without glasses. So I have to keep her happy, first and foremost. And my wife said... Okay. This is to my wife's now. Right? That's to my wife's. Mm -hmm. Because there was that, that, that other thing. You know, I was like, uh, what are you doing with him? And I said, I know, right? <laughs> okay, so that's to my wife's. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> but did she, did, did she really know? tell you, you look better? <laughs> Maybe Anna should put them on because. <laughs> Yet another mediocre white male conservative politician blaming a poor decision on his wife. <laughs> Let's throw Anna under the bus. <laughs> he he's the guy that you swim out to when he's drowning. You've got the life jacket and the stuff nope. to bring him in, and he pushes you down. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you zigged. You zigged. <laughs> you know it. You know it's true, right? I oh, know yeah. glasses. Well, oh, it was no, my no, wife's that's idea. That's yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. It was my wife's idea. Yeah. I'm so, what a, I'm sorry, Mr. Grizzly's mom. What a fucking loser. Like, it's just. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, um, there is a bit of news kits that has come out. Unfortunately, we can't speak much to it at the just moment. Yet. Just yet. Because We're working on it. All we have is the headline, and it seems that they have found a way to like keep this super double sealed pinky swear for realsies locked behind a paywall thing. <laughs> Nobody can penetrate. And so not, um, not, I, we 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 pay for enough stuff to to keep this up and running. I I can't take on anymore. Like I yeah. I really can't. Yeah. Know? So um, hopefully uh, we'll look for some help on that. But the allegation is that, um, uh, and it's a story that's being broken by Stephanie Levitz. And let me just put this up because, as you know, kids, I've said a few times, uh, one journalist in the nation for whom I have all the time in the world is Susan Delacourt. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Susan Delacourt retweeted this Toronto Star exclusive uh, we're putting a one-word comment. <clears throat> Mr. Grizzly, if you would, please. Yes, sir. And that one word is? 
Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wrote something before I saw this. This tweet came before mine was written, mm -hmm. but I hadn't seen it yet. And um, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, when Susan Delacorte says, whoa, uh, my ears go, whoa. Yeah, there's something there, right? I mean, I'm... for a for a, journal, a veteran journalist of the caliber that Susan Delcourt is, who's seen a lot of things, mm -hmm. <laughs> who's seen a lot of poop go down, to say "whoa," you have my attention. That's all I'm saying. Um, now. We don't know the contents of the article, but assuming... Uh, and I can't find it on any other news source either. No, none of the affiliates have, uh, have republished it yet. So, I mean, this no. must be like really, really well read. So they're keeping it behind paywall for longer. Mm -hmm. and, and hey, hey, good for you, Toronto Star. Yeah. No, 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 no I, mean, but... I mean, in terms of getting people access to the information as quickly as they can get it, it makes it way more difficult, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of goes against the purpose of informing. But uh, if your newspaper shuts down, then <laughs> so. Yeah, um, it's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. Paper got to do what a paper got to do to make paper. I, I wonder if we'll see this story in any post media outlets today. Who knows? No, no, maybe. Probably. So, not. We can only see the first two paragraphs, and it's uh, Pierre Polyevre's conservative leadership campaign paid for the lawyer who helped a whistleblower. Maybe we should do the pee pee things there. Whistleblower. Whistleblower. Bring down with the air quotes, uh, the Nixon air quotes. <laughs> it's like he goes like from the Nixon peace sign to air quote. Really weird. Uh, who helped a whistleblower bring down our rival Patrick Brown? The star has learned the whistleblower's allegation that Brown broke election law ultimately led to him, be dis him being disqualified from the race last July, transforming the leadership contest into a coronation for Polyev, who won a decisive first ballot victory last September. That's all we know. I, I think you saw somewhere else that it was the bill was about thirty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. What's being alleged. That's about all I know. And well, well, let's remember also he he opted out of one of the final debates and had to pay a fifty thousand dollar fine. So the guy who likes to say, "Bring home powerful paychecks for common people," spent eighty seven thousand dollars, fifty thousand to avoid a debate with his peers. Know, that we know of, alleged. an alleged thirty seven thousand dollar lawyer bill, legal fees to bring down his opponent. So here's the thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of Patrick Brown. I, I, I think he, um, I think he's got a little bit of grease on him. Okay. But he's been brought down twice now and both times have been under false allegations. From a whistleblower. Yeah. Both times. Or alleged. Um, Cause first one wasn't whistleblower alleged. Mm -hmm. uh, essay, which uh, didn't happen. Yes. It was an, an alleged sexual assault that didn't happen because the woman said, he took me up to the second floor of the house on a house that has one floor. And then they discovered the whole thing was bullshit, which uh, you got to remember who, who was the, who was the national anchor who came out and reported that story right away without actually vetting it through. She doesn't work for CTV news anymore. That isn't what brought her down. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, I'm putting that out there because that did happen. Mm -hmm. They did have to issue a retraction and an ap apologetic statement because they ran with the story to get clicks. Now, here's the funny thing about it. Let's paint this picture. Patrick Brown uh, is a progressive conservative and he believes in progressive policies. Again, I'm not a big fan of his and I think he's got a little bit of dirt on his hands. I'm not going to say otherwise. And I've read some things about him from people who are in the know to say he's kind of uh, greasy. But the thing is, he, he, he didn't, he only went along with the, um, C crap, the, the reform Canadian reform Alliance party, uh, joining the progressive conservative party and just changing it to the conservative party of Canada because he thought he could change it from within. 
But let's be honest here. Daddy Harper and granddaddy Preston Manning were not going to have this heathen, non-Jesus Bible thumper in the party changing a damn thing. Because Patrick mm-hmm. Brown is not about the religious stuff. Mm-hmm. He's not. Whether he's an atheist or a believer, I don't know, I don't care, but he he does, like you and I, believe that religion has no place in politics. Like mm-hmm. zero, none. And mm-hmm. he wanted to change that from within. Well, guess what? He's just not playing their kind of baseball. So, so he, had to go. he had to go. And they were going to do whatever they could to bring him down. And we've talked to David about this, David Wallace, who can tell you intimate details about Mr. Brown and say, look, and he, and he point blank said, I don't like the man and here's why. And he listed out his reasons, but he said, what was done to him was wrong. It was underhanded. It was dirty politics. It was incorrect. He was labeled as a sexual assaulter when he never committed the crime. Mm -hmm. And now you've got this alleged election thing that he didn't. So, you know, there's dirty politics and then there's greasy, dirty fucking politics. And it's, it's disgusting. And again, Daddy Harper and Granddaddy Preston Manning pulling the puppet strings from the IDU. That's just my speculation, of course. I'm just asking questions after all. Yes. And Uncle Victor. Uncle Victor, yeah. 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 New addition to the family. Yeah. Victor Orban, uh, yeah. a fascist from yeah. Hungary. That's the thing with this Harper guy is like everybody says, you know, they're trying to say he was this great guy and that he's so loved. It's like, yeah, then why did he self exile? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, couldn't do it from within. So he's trying to do it from without. <clears throat> so, so let's, let's take that story, the 37,000 alleged 37,000, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that took place just in the last three days, right? So that was released. Okay. That last I don't want to move. To, I don't want to move to the other thing yet. Cause no, 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 no. I'm just saying we've got three things right one after another. Like in, in over a three day period, it's like how we how do we keep up? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, no, but that that's the point. Flood the zone, exhaust you, make yeah. you tune out. Yeah, the, these are deliberate strategies. Of course, that's they when are. I say you know democracy is something that you do, and you got to put your body in the way, and you got to stay in the game and whatnot. Because don't get me don't make no mistake here, right? Like, this is not easy. No. Right? It's not. That you're the mountain, they're the ocean, and they're just trying to erode your will, and they are relentless, and they will never, ever, ever stop. No. No. Because they believe, they believe Jesus is on their side. So, you know, it's not, that's why I say, you know, when you get a little exhausted, take a step out of the relay, somebody will run your leg, but come back, because otherwise, that's the only way we win. Yeah, we got to hand off the baton to somebody else to run with it for a little bit from time to time because, you know, they just because keep flooding Because they will exhaust you. They yeah. will exhaust you. Yeah. They will. They will. And, you know, I keep on saying it might be about time that we not necessarily learn to play dirty, mm-hmm. but um, if we're flooding zones, I'm just saying, it's way much easier, way 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 easier for the progressive side to make them dance to the tune we're calling i mean if we're talking corruption Mm -hmm. if we're talking groomers if we're talking divisive if we're talking cheering for the country to fail oh yeah i mean come on man i mean Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be that hard it really really wouldn't be that hard so this thing with Patrick Brown, allegedly, allegedly, if it just, it's almost like variations on a, you know, you're thinking like classical music, variations on something composing. So we had the Ninth UCP movement. thing. Yeah. So we had Jason Kinney with the UCP thing. And there we had the alleged kamikaze candidate that came in there to say all the things about the one candidate Jason Kennedy wanted out that Jason Kennedy couldn't be seen saying because that would make him a horrible person, even though mm-hmm. we all know he's a horrible person, but he needs someone to be his mask. Yeah. Right? I think he needs someone to be his beard actually, but that's my theory. Well, well, yeah. That, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole, um, other. Yeah. That's a whole other episode, mm-hmm. honey. 
Um, <laughs> oh, darling, I can tell you some things, mm. but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to because uh, it would it be bad. It would be bad if I did. Uh, mm-hmm. Bad in in multiple ways. It could expose other people. Uh, it, it's a whole chain of yeah. yeah. No, no, we don't do that. We don't we do don't. that. We don't do that. That's not us. Um, so this there was the whole kamikaze candidate thing, which apparently is still being under investigation, even though Jason Kennedy is no longer like. It's like really, could you get around mm-hmm. and something? Here? Um, how long does it take? But here, instead of having right the kamikaze candidate, now we have like the kamikaze whistleblower. Mm-hmm. But pretty much the same play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, $37,000 for something, if true, was a campaign expense because Pierre Polliver's conservative leadership campaign paid for the lawyer. So um, I'm wondering how that was found out. And my question is, was that declared to Elections Canada? And was it declared as just legal fees and sort of lumped in there because maybe that's a legal fee specifically that is not eligible. And if you just kind of generally call it miscellaneous legal fees, uh, and this guy already has a compliance yeah, or for having done a campaign event in which uh, he was wearing a polo shirt with uh, the conservative logo on it mm-hmm. during an election campaign, and somebody had actually told him before, it's like, um, yeah, sure, you want to wear that shirt? And he said, yeah, I'm wearing that shirt. Um, and uh, let's also remember that a um, compliance agreement with Elections Canada is a lifetime thing, and yes. it's actually a deferred prosecution agreement because what he did back then was bad enough that it could have led to some prosecution if Election Canada chose to go that route. And they said, in exchange for us not going that route, you will commit to not pulling this kind of crap again. And if you do, then we are probably going to take this to court. And even though this is not exactly the same type of thing, it is doing it's really in the ballpark with money. It's on really thin ice. <laughs> Like really and thin. Of course, it's for a leadership campaign, which is not regulated by Elections Canada. Though. Right, right. So that's what just hit me as I'm thinking it through. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so Elections Canada still, can't do anything, but uh, um, that's definitely an RCMP, though. Mm-hmm. Thing. It's so greasy. Because still, Passing off lawyer fee, legal fees that were meant to do a hit job on your opponent to take him out of the race uh, might not violate elections law because it happened in the context of a leadership campaign, but uh, it may be an improper use of a campaign donation. We're gonna have money. to. Uh, we're gonna have to consult with a couple of our lawyers. And uh, see what they can tell us, because we do have lawyers part of the network. We should we should check in with a couple of them and say this see. somehow. See, you know those things where you sit at home, and you go like, somehow this seems illegal. I don't know exactly how, mm. but somehow this seems illegal. And then sometimes you find out that it's not, and then that's when you learn that just because it's awful doesn't mean it's unlawful. Well, and and that's when you kind of think, you know, I think we need to change some of the laws here because. Um, See, here's the thing. If I pulled that stunt in my life, I'd be, I'd be finished. Yeah. Like, let's say you're up for a promotion at work and, uh, you know, that, uh, Bill in cubicle four over there, he's quite a keener and a little bit of a kiss ass. So, uh, you know, a little, uh, allegation that he, you know, dips his hand in the, in the, the going little till. Every now and then, you know, maybe got a little handsy with someone. Yeah. Yeah, just allegedly. 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 An allegation is all it takes to destroy a life today. Right? Yeah. 
So yeah, destroy I'll... somebody else, and in the process, I'm thinking, yeah, hey, I look good. No, no and what no, if no, like don't. this, you know, this promotion is going to get you like you know an extra like thirty thousand dollars a year and send you on the fast track, you know, yeah, punch you up as a star, and well, you know, somebody's willing to do that for you for five. Yeah, yeah. Give me a few and, bucks, yeah. I'll make sure it happens. And of course, you never think you'll get caught. Yeah, of course not. Right. So, well, all of a sudden, that looks like a good return on investment, now, isn't it? Why do um, people commit crimes? Because they don't think they're getting caught. That's why. So the person who would do that, that would be kind of illegal, wouldn't it? In in private sector, it certainly would be. But I, I guess in public sector, they, uh, well, they see things see. differently. Let's see let's what happens see Because here. Uh, even though... Uh, it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how yeah. it plays out. Even though uh, leadership campaigns are not regulated by Elections Canada or Elections Ontario or any provincial election body. Um, it's like, remember the know, party that you're dealing with here. I mean, yeah. that's greasy. Yeah, but greasy. paying someone to bear false witness against someone in order to gain materially from it seems to me something that would be in a private organization, which a political party is, mm -hmm. right? You're not covered by Elections Canada or Elections Ontario or whatever, but you are covered by the laws that govern private organizations that have a license to operate well, and uh, issue charitable receipts. It's completely unethical. But this man has no ethics whatsoever. None. Well, this party has no ethics. I mean, come on, it pleaded guilty in, to in and out in the first election. And, yeah. yeah. Skippy air quotes, one. <laughs> and then after pleading guilty, because it was a money thing, right? And all the money that they declared that they should have weren't allowed to spend, they actually de declared it as expenditures. And like that's an if you winning candidates that are that get more than five percent or, or candidates that anyway there's candidates i think that get more than five percent of the vote get a certain amount of their expenses returned mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they got the expenses returned on money that they weren't allowed to spend in yeah, the first funny place how that works and then they tried to keep that money after having pled to guilty <sighs> <sighs> they eventually had to pay it back but it was about a million dollars i believe so but they tried to keep it first I can't, I can't, I can't write stuff like this because it's just so absurd. And yet here we are. Corrupt. It's in its DNA. It's in its yeah. DNA. It's the first election it won as this party. The UCP was fruit from the poison tree. Kenny cheated in the first, even though he had it sealed in order, to, you know, allegedly cheated. Sorry. I mean, then you get to Doug Ford and that movement sort of comes into over there. He's not playing full ball because I don't think Doug Ford's all in on the religious thing. Um, he plays footsie with him, but I'm not sure he's all in on it. I no, he, he he's not. So he won't be their man. Yeah, I can't tell with him. But uh, but still, he's like the whole different other type of greasy. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. slap your back, sort of, you know. Well, like and kind and, of and let's, let's, let's pause here and take a beat for a second. Because we say this, because we say this, that does not mean we believe or think or endorse that the other side, the liberals or the NDP, don't have grease or dirt on them. They all do. They all do. As I keep it's on just saying. One group has a whole lot more. Democracy <laughs> comes with a basic grease tax. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it sucks and we wish it wasn't the case, but it does or else it doesn't work. <laughs> but I think it's important that we, that we emphasize that because... Uh, you know, you've always got people, oh, you guys are just a, a bunch of leftist cocks. Well, no, we're not. We're centrist. No. We lean a little left because we believe in a little bit more progressive programs. But, uh, I mean, quite frankly, today's Liberal Party would be in lockstep with Joe Clark's Progressive Conservative Party. Yep. Okay. And, and, you know, it's people go, well, bad. that's not true. I'm like, actually... Joe Clark would be in lockstep with this current liberal party because the, whatever they call that, I know they call it conservative. No, 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 that's not it. Well, and all the red Tories that I know have completely, they're like, there's, I don't have a party right now. So they've, they've been voting NDP. Uh, some, some started voting liberal, but the red Tories were, were what we would call a very progressive conservative. Mm -hmm. Right. It's yeah. a, it's a long standing thing, red Tories. It's not it's not new. Yeah, blue liberals and red Tories. Yes, you know they're still liberal party, but they they lean a little bit more right. 
but they still identify with the party. And there's the progressive conservatives that lean a little more left, but they still identify with the party because the base, the base platform was something they could identify with. And that was our, our good friend, Charles Adler. You know, yeah. he was a progressive his whole life, a progressive. He would have but been, I would call him a red Tory. Yeah. But wanted fiscal responsibility. Mm-hmm. So we had the money in order to be able to do right by people. I was the same way when I started out. Yeah. When I heard progressive conservatives, I wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You get all the progressive stuff and you get the fiscal responsibility. Sign me up. Yeah. That sounds like a good deal. Yeah. That sounded infinitely reasonable to me. No, I mean, that's learned. just it. You know, what was it? So many, so many people <laughs> I have seen online state, um, Justin Trudeau didn't make, didn't make me a liberal. The conservative mm. party of Canada did. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They're, they're they have lost the plot completely. Because they're in a whole other battle, right? Mm-hmm. They're in a whole other battle. They've seen all these things popping up on the, to the right of them. They've never had to compete in a world where there's a party to the right of them. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they're trying to do that. They're just like, you know, they're all about, I keep on saying it. They're all about the fricking money. Yeah. And they were, the money, they were money, they money. Were, yeah, they were playing footsie a little bit when, but when that during the convoy, when they saw that give send go money, mm-hmm. what was it? First, it was GoFundMe eleven million. Yes. Then that got shut down. Then give send go raised what twenty million? Yeah. When they saw that, they said, "That's ours." Yeah. Yeah. So they that's snuggled the right up the to them. Cut. That's the size of the cut that we potentially can lose to the PPC. Mm-hmm. That's our money because we want it. And then they Leave started. Leave it as their manifest destiny as the saying goes, yes. right? And then they started to manspread politically to try to cover that side because they also know they can't afford to lose three to five to seven percent every election to that side. Oh, God. Because no. there's no way they'll form a government ever again. No. So they're trying to eliminate that side. While still trying to appear reasonable, <laughs> to, and it, it, it can't be done. You got you got to pick one. I say this is one of these. You you can have it all, mm-hmm. just not all at once. Yeah, you can't be here, seen courting there. that side, and then come right like the latest thing. Right, some idiot put like just. Uh, I wish I could find it. Well, I, I could find it, but some idiot was like Pierre Polliver's dad is gay or something like that. So how could he? And it's like, so how could he possibly? Uh, I bet you have a black friend too, don't you? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't you? It's like, and here's the thing, right? It's like, as the same time as this guy thinks. That, well, Pierre Polyev's father is gay. Ergo, how could it be possible that his son might be a self-loathing bigot? Because apparently, well, I mean, Apple doesn't fall yeah. from it. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> here we go. This from the same people. <laughs> You know where I'm going. With this, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm in the back of the canoe just enjoying the ride right now. <laughs> You're doing the paddling, and I'm just liking at the scenery going, oh, this is fun. Look at this. This is great. Weather's great. The sun is shining. There's trees. There's birds. Oh, look at, there's a fish just jumped. Oh, this is a good canoe ride. Right. So it's like, it is impossible for a gay parent to have produce a gay child because all of those gay children have that like wind up on the street came from Straight the people we're supposed to thank for their existence, <laughs> according to Eric. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That fellow's name is Eric. Came from the street yeah, people. That, it's um, like if you don't, you know, you don't want gay people, stop making them. What? Well, if you have, you know, it's, they're born and, and it's you like, made them. 
I'm like, just <laughs> this guy is really stupid enough to believe, or at least willing to wear the face to pretend he believes and put his name and face to it. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he's lighting the loafers too. I mean, come on, come on. And worse come yet, on. that we are stupid enough to believe that having a gay father alone makes it impossible for their child to be a bigot because I can tell you it sure fucking isn't the case that it's impossible for queer kids to have bigot parents. <laughs> Ryan Williams uh, is this guy's name. Uh, I'm just, I am just, 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 just. Can't. Flabbergasted. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, right? Those parents, right? That are saying, you know, leave our kids alone. Mm-hmm. Who, like, ironically, is like, um, uh, what about leave us queers alone? Yeah. As Lisa said in her video, just let us fucking live, right? Um, they're saying, like, they're talking about groomers. They claim they care about groomers. Mm-hmm. These are the people grooming who basically, well, grooming religiously, number one, mm-hmm. uh, but, you know, Again, forty. It is estimated that forty percent of street youth is to us LGBTQIA plus, because mm-hmm. they can't. They they can't. Oftentimes, uh, I, well, okay. Let's. I don't know what the actual stat is, but I know the number of. Uh, so that uh, of that forty, you said forty percent, right? Of that forty percent, I would say the percentage of them who once coming out to their family members were booted is probably extremely high. Mm-hmm. And what ha- what is more likely to happen to a child once they are booted, couch surfing, living on the street? Bad things. Like being recruited for being trafficked and grooming? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Sold into sexual slavery. So if, yeah. Addicted yeah, or- to drugs. Selling their bodies, mm-hmm. just to get a meal and a, and a and a bed to sleep in. So, uh, yeah. Again, don't fucking pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. That you stand against grooming, when you are the type of people who, if your child came to you and told them they told you that they were rainbow, would be most likely to do something. To take action to make sure that your child ends up groomed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, G T F O H with that B S. It's it's just it's it's the oldest story, right? It's the oldest story there is when it comes to to uh, street youth. So many of them, so many of them. Mm-hmm. The minute they they you know come out to their family or, or a family member, suddenly it's like you are no longer a member of this family. You were kicked out. I'm like, I thought you loved your kids. Only so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I only love them if they, uh, you know, do exactly as I tell them. Oh, so you don't want children. You want slaves. Or automatons, one or the other, you know. Mini use. Mini use, yeah. Guess what? Here's the thing: you, you, your child may inherit many of your characteristics and traits, but they're not you. That's the whole point. They're not you. They are individuals with personalities and a destiny in their own right, and you're supposed to make sure that they don't run head first into walls somewhere along the way. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're not supposed to tell them who they're going to be. I'm not a parent and I'll never be one, but I have uh, two great parents who are still married, still very much love one another. And they were always like, we will accept you for whomever you are. We, we want you to be better than us. We want you to have more opportunity than we had. We want you to have a better life than we had. That's what parenting is, isn't it? You know, you, you have children so that you can give them the opportunities you didn't get. Now, some yeah. people take it too far and decide that they're going to live through their child, which is not good. But there's a whole group of people right now who don't want their children to do anything that they don't believe they have the right to do. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, a, it's again, we're in the worst time. 
So to, like, so I'm not a parent, but to me, it's like, like, you know, don't put your hand on the burner. Don't stick your finger in the electric socket. Not like, don't hang around with that guy because he's a little fancy. Pardon what? A par- pardon what? Fancy. You, you've gone one step over the line there, sir. It's too far. We're right. just trying to make a point here, by the way, for those right. of you who are watching and listening. Right, right. <laughs> We're kind of play acting, okay? Just, yeah. just to make, just to make sure everybody yes, understands yes. that. But it, it, right, mm-hmm. there's a, the, there's an obvious <laughs> material, substantial, meaningful, tangible difference. Mm-hmm. So, um, so this is the thing, and here's why. It, normally, I would have let this pass, but it's the tweet to which this person is, well, not responding, but I guess to call this subtweeting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you want me to put this on the screen? Way. Yes. Yeah. It's a tweet from the Liberal Party. It has the Prime Minister saying a couple of words mm-hmm. uh, about the fact that 18 years ago, same-sex marriage became legal in Canada. And why, why not play them? Mm-hmm. Let's hear what he had to say. When he gets caught with a straight pride t-shirt beside him, when his finance critic stands up with an anti-LGBT group that is stirring up fears amongst parents, oh, oh, that was a mistake. We didn't know that. Just like it was a mistake that they attacked Maxine Bernier uh, for wearing a pride t-shirt uh, in a by-election in Manitoba just a few months ago. It was just a mistake. Well, at one point, that many mistakes is not a mistake anymore. It's a pattern. When he gets caught with a straight... Huh? It's like he listens to the show. Mm-hmm. How many times do I say, too many coincidences is not a coincidence? That's right. Literally. He literally took the words out of my mouth here. It's like a I said, like, oh, he didn't see that and he didn't... Well, let's, let's, let's read the tweet. The let's read the Does tweet. Does he watch the show? Well, wonder. <laughs> let's read the tweet. I'll read the tweet from the Liberal Party, and you can read the follow-up, the subtweet from Ryan. So yeah. the Liberal Party says, 18 years ago today, same-sex marriage became legal in Canada. Pierre Polyev stood against this progression back then, and just this month, he posed for a photo with someone wearing a straight pride shirt. When sh- someone shows you who they are, believe them. That's from the Liberal Party. And now from the conservative, Ryan Williams. Pierre Polivier's father is gay. Enough of the division. This party is in regression. Oh, yeah, of course. Member he has Parliament a black friend, too, Bay right? He yeah. has a black friend, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Member of Parliament for the Bay of Quinty. Shadow Minister of Pan Canadian Trade and Competition. And all around jackass. Again, tell me you have no gay friends. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, well, I mean, and the rumor, and again, I can't substantiate it, but when when Pierre Polyev voted against same sex marriage back in two thousand and four, was two thousand four? Uh, no, two thousand six. Twenty years ago, two thousand five. 2005. 2005, when he voted against it in 2005, the rumor was that his father, an out proud gay man, was in the House of Commons at the time when he voted against it. I have read that many times. I don't know if that is true. Would it surprise me? No, because he voted against it. And let's not forget that, yes, there were the pamphlets against Maxime. Mm-hmm. And yes, there was posing with straight pride Eric. But he also went to Portage Lisger and personally campaigned for a man that ran on conversion therapy. Mm-hmm. And he now has two. He's got the conversion therapy twins. He can point to Melissa Lansman and Eric Duncan all he wants. And he can say, they're in my inner circle. I can't possibly be anti-gay. You have Garnet Genuous and Brandon Leslie in your caucus. You have not booted them out for being pro-gay conversion therapy. And worse than that, you actually went and campaigned for the conversion therapy guy in the most recent by-election. You 
will sell your grandmother for an extra 2% in the polls. Don't, again, you are not our friend. Well, and you are not our friend. You can put as many self-loathing queer people in your inner circle as you want. You are not our friend. Sorry, we see you not buying it. It's what you do. It's what you do when it counts. Votes count. Your most precious commodity is your time. Who you spend your time going out to campaign for counts. Who you elevate counts. And why you elevate them. Elevating two rainbow people into your inner circle is not enough if the reason they're elevated there is just to be a human shield behind which you hide to say that you like queer people and then you stick the knives in their back to twist it. That's not allyship and that's not friendship. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. All right, and here, since we're talking about groomers, <clears throat> one week after members, uh, this is from Sask Kate here, one week after members of the Canadian megachurch, the Meeting House, saw their former pastor arrested and charged with sexual assault, not one but four of its former pastors have now been credibly accused and two convicted of sexual assault. <clears throat> paging Dr. Bahira Abdul Salam, <laughs> paging Dr. Bahira Abdul Salam, please come to the white courtesy phone, Dr. Bahira Abdul Salam. Your um, allies um, have been keeping something from you. Well, 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 well. The people with whom you've allied uh, to uh, leave our kids alone Seem to have a lot of trouble doing that. Teaching Dr. Bahira. Abdul Salam. So. Um, not drag queens. Not transgender, darling. If you're worried about the groomers, you're cozying up to them. Just saying. You might want to look at us as evil, but. And that's okay. And you may not like us. And you have the right not to like us. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, again, you may not like what we have to say, but we're not the ones who are lying to you, darling. We're not the ones who are insulting your intelligence, and we're not the ones who are using you. Eventually in time, you will see who your allies are. Or not. Or not. But we know we're on the right side of this one. And that's why when you say that you're resolute, it means nothing to us. Because we know we're on the right side. And we know, as I'm going to say, that the Muslim community, for the most part, the overwhelming majority, are wonderful, kind, tolerant, beautiful people who are welcoming and who just want to live in peace, just like we do. They just want to well, so came to this home. country live their best lives. Yeah. That's it. Staying and on we the topic of groomers, I've got, I've got a headline for you here. Um, this was from June 13th. Uh, now that the, the, uh, it, it's from, look, I, I got to disclose this first. It's from the Roy's report. And the Roy's report is reporting the truth, restoring the church, Chris, Christian journalism. But no. what makes them different is they don't hide anything. Okay. Here's the headline. Mega church discloses 38 reports of sexual misconduct by four pastors. 
one week after members of the That's Canadian United Church, the Meeting House. Yeah, I'm just pulling up the, giving you the thing. Yeah. Uh, their former pastor arrested and charged with sexual assault. Their leadership revealed, blah, blah, blah. And I just like, so I, I was very, uh, um, when I was reading this earlier and I was looking at this, this website, the Roy's Report, I was really skeptical. But as I go through it, it's like, no, they, I think these people are what you would call actual Christians. Mm-hmm. Like actual died in the wool, real life Christians who are, are sick of this and they want to, they want to get all of it out. They want to put it all in the open, expose it, expose the truth. Because like I said, it's, it's re- reporting the truth, restoring the church. Then you can come. I, you know, I can get on board with them in that sense because they're like, look, we're yep. going to, we're going to tell you stories you're not going to like. The Royer's report is a Christian reporting the unvarnished truth about what's happening in the Christian community so the church can be reformed and restored. I'm like, you know, I, I can get on board with that. I'm not a religious person. Sorry, mom, but you know that. Um, but this is somebody who genuinely wants to do good in the world. This is, this is, this is not a crystal fascist individual. Clearly, if you read any of the reports, anything that she's written, anything on the website, it's like, they're, these are good people. They're coming at things with a slightly different angle, but they're like, we are going to investigate everything. I, I'm down with that. I'm down yeah. like with it. You could come sit right by me. Welcome, friends. Welcome, friends. <laughs> like, yeah, that's the thing. And, and when we say it, diversity is our strength, diversity is our strength, it's true, especially when those of us who are diverse and share different views can still find a common ground and figure out a way to get along. Again, not, not, my, not, my, not my area that I like to dive in, but as I've gone through and I've read some of the stuff on the page, it's like, you know, these are good people trying to do the right thing. And I think they're going about it in the right way. They, if you go to the website, I'll tell you what, I'll put a link. Um, obviously not in the chat because we don't have a chat right now, but I can put it in the captions here. Um, hang on, I'll just put it right here. That's what I'll do. Okay, there's that. That's not the right one. <laughs> Let me just put it here. So, so people can uh, copy this from the screen and you can, you can check out the website. Uh, let me just show it there so it'll show up julieroys.com i'll leave that up for a couple of minutes so if anybody wants to access that again uh, like lawsuit mike fearson's mega church complicit in murder of former elder's daughter they're reporting the really there's some dirty stuff dirty greasy stuff here and they're going in they're going for the kill and going for the kill in the sense that they want to expose the corruption, the sexual abuse, the the financial improprieties, uh, some of the terrible practices that the, some of these Christians, in quotation marks, use. Hmm. These people are real Christians. They're trying to do good in the world. I can get on board with that. Hmm. Maybe you should reach out and see if we can get someone from there. It'd be interesting, yeah, I think. Eh? It's, you know, coming from a completely different... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and we always treat people respectfully. So, I mean, I think it would, yeah, that would be interesting because that, 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 that's the perspective that gets drowned out on that side, mm-hmm. right? Because the evangelicals and the purists and whatnot, they're all so loud and taking up all the space, but just good every day. And like Christians, Muslims, whatever faith, right? They're good insert religion choice of here everywhere across right who just who believe in their faith who just go about their lives trying to do mm-hmm. good trying to be welcoming trying to help others right and that nourishes them and that's a beautiful thing yes it is and they and, and right? most often are live and let live kind of people right 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 you're not harming me, so why should I? Why should I object to how you live your life if you're not harming me? But who speaks for them? Hmm. Right? There's well, no this is organ- voice, I think. Exactly. It's like there's there's no organizations for people who, meh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Eh, yeah, they're a little flamboyant, but uh, 
they don't hurt anybody. That's fine. Uh, yeah, you know, they don't celebrate Christmas. I don't really understand why, but they're cool. Yeah, yeah. They seem to have a lot of people over for like big family stuff all the time. Never seen a family. I get on board with that. But yeah, yeah. okay, whatever. Right? Is you know, people you notice, and it's like, eh, I don't need to have an opinion on that. <laughs> it's like, eh. so um, a lovely kit named Dolores T on Twitter and Jackie Blue. Uh, helped us with uh, the Pierre Polliver article oh. on leadership. So I have okay. access to it. So I will, uh, let's read it together, shall we? Oh, yes. Let's, let's, let's put this on the screen. Okay. Let's, let's put this on the screen. Any second now it should show up. I don't know why it's not. It's, it, 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 it's been doing this the last couple yeah, of days. Yeah, there's a little right? delay, eh? Some yeah, reason. sometimes a long delay. Let's try yeah. it again here. And I'm looking at my end of things, and uh, I don't know where it's coming from because everything here is well within operational parameters. So I think it must be the service provider that we're using, Restream. Right. And there we go. There we go. Okay, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah, how about you take the title because you got that voice. Exclusive. Pierre Polliver's leadership campaign paid legal fees of whistleblower who took down rival Patrick Brown. It just dawned on me. Would this sort of like be? Story time with Queen Beaver? I think it would be. I think it would be. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, kids and cubs, gather around. <laughs> We're going to tell you a story. It's only uh, four minutes long, so sit down and get comfortable. But don't, 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 don't get too comfortable because it's only four minutes. Four minutes out of your life of a story that you need to hear. By Stephanie Levitz, Ottawa Bureau, Toronto Star. Pierre Polyev's conservative leadership campaign paid for the lawyer who helped a whistleblower bring down arch-rival Patrick Brown, the star has learned. The whistleblower's allegation that Brown broke election law ultimately led to him being disqualified from the race last July, transforming the leadership contest into a coronation for <laughs> Polyev, who won a decisive first ballot victory last September. That thing sure comes in handy, doesn't it, kiddies? Mm -hmm. Okay. Brown and Polyevre were at each other's throats for the first five months of the leadership campaign. Ooh, drama. When he was kicked out, he blamed Polyev's team and race organizers, arguing the conservative establishment just didn't want him to win. Mm. Aww. Polyev's team rebuffed any accusations of responsibility, pointing to the sheer size of its member. Ship. Sales as proof <laughs> that Polyev's victory was all but certain. But Polyev's final campaign, financial return, recently posted online by Elections Canada and reviewed by the Star, raised new questions about a potential connection between whistleblower Debbie Jodoy. I remember we spoke about her on our shows. Hey, girl! And Polyev's team, there were uno, dos, tres, cuatro. See, we even read to the kids in Spanish. There were four payments from his campaign to hear lawyers for, to her lawyers' firms. It was through a lawyer that Joe Dwight had approached the party to report that instead of being paid by the Brown campaign for her work, her costs were being covered by a third-party company. Oh, it's an arrangement that could be against the law, and one of the reasons Brown was disqualified. And does anybody here note the irony mm. of her complaining that she was paid for her campaign work by a third party and not her employer, mm. or not the campaign itself? And when she goes to do the whistleblowing, the whistleblowing is also paid for by a third party. So that's it, it, um, does that strike you as peculiar? <laughs> I think it's peculiar. Oh, I think the judge is going to love this. <laughs> oh, we got to we got to we got to talk to David Wallace about this and see if he knows anything because or Mark, hmm. or Mark Murray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's what's that word? Ju juice, ju ju juicy. Juicy. 
Mm. Mm. It's very juicy. Jen, get that juice inside, all over your face. Inside I mean, my mouth. Is, in, in a, when you're eating the, the, the sandwich. Mm. Mm -hmm. Get Jen, the inside of my mouth is getting very moist. Moist. Mm. Mm. Moist. Moist. <laughs> We probably freaked a few people out because there's people who have a fear of that word. If you, if you have a fear of the word moist, all you have to do is join me on my ASMR program and I can help you work with that. I'll be on at 9.30 p.m. this evening. Angry Speedo Moist Rant. Well, the Angry Speedo uh, Man rant is a separate thing. That's going to be a, an OnlyFans thing only. Only on OnlyFans. That's it. You want to pay to see it? You got it. You want to see it? You got to pay. That's it. That's all. You want the Angry Speedo Man rants? You got to pay for that. I'll give you a taste of it. Do you know anything about Civex? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, before we left, we found out that Jodoy had approached the party to report that instead of being paid by the Brown campaign for her work, her costs were being covered by a third-party company. It's an arrangement that could be against the law and one of the reasons Brown was disqualified. Over a nearly 10-day period, all of the parties involved initially declined to answer questions from the star about what the payments were for. Because, huh. gee, payments that you're not embarrassed at all to have made are things that you want to keep hidden from the press for 10 days. Because that's... Especially if they yeah. ask every day for 10 days. Ready to tell us now? No. Ready to tell us now? No. How about now? And now? 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 How about now? Now? Is now good? <laughs> 10 days. Uh, but mom, one of them... Mom, mom. <laughs> Mama, 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 mommy, mom, mom. But one of the architects of Polyev's victory finally confirmed Friday there was a link. Bum, bum, bum. They knew about Joe Dwight's concerns because she told them. <laughs> and they paid for the lawyer she'd used to bring those concerns to the party. Quote, Debbie Jodoy approached the Polyevre campaign when she became concerned about what she described as illegal conduct by the Brown campaign. Jenny Byrne, who remains a key Polyevre strategist, said in a statement, maybe not for long. The Polyevre campaign encouraged Ms. Jodoy to get a lawyer. Ms. Jodoy, the widow of a Canadian Armed Forces veteran. <laughs> Sorry for your loss, man. Sorry for your loss, but uh, Jenny? No, no, no. No, 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 Jenny. There was no need for that. No, no, no. I advised that she could not afford legal counsel. The Polyev campaign agreed to cover the reasonable costs of a lawyer to advise Miss Joe Dwight, completely ignoring and sailing past the fact of an obvious conflict of interest. It's not a conflict of interest if I don't see it that way. I, I'll answer the question the way I want to. That's not I was interested in paying for the whistleblower because it didn't conflict with my plans to get Patrick Brown out of the race. I saw no conflict of interest. None. Zero. There was no conflict there. It, it, it helped me get rid of him. I eliminated I my competition. I was not conflicted one bit. Not, not in the least. What a greasy prick. I was fine prick. with my interests. Oh, what a greasy <laughs> prick. Fucking shit giving. Like, look, I, look, okay, look. Somebody said to me the other day, aren't you just as bad as the people screaming in, in, the, in the prime minister's face the other day in Belleville? And I said, no, no, I'm not. Because I'm not doing that. I'm not driving to another part of the country to scream in the face of a political leader. And it's not something I would ever do. Yeah, we got, we got that for tomorrow's show. <clears throat> Yeah, no, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something I would ever do, though, right? I wouldn't do that. Yep. No. Did, and, and somebody no. said, well, when you yelled at the truckers, that's the same. No, it's not. No. This was a group of people who encamped in my neighborhood and tormented my friends and neighbors and tortured us for weeks on end. 
there's a huge difference there. And if you fail to see that, well, I guess we're never going to see eye to eye on a damn thing. Not all protests are equal. No. Just because they, you call it a protest and they call it a protest doesn't mean they're the same damn thing. It ain't what you do. It's the way that you do it. How difficult exactly. is this to understand? Well, some people Jesus are, Christ, you know, I'm a bike riding sideways. Some people <sighs> confuse privilege with freedom and think they're one and the same when mm -hmm. they're not. Mm -hmm. Back to the story? Yes, please, sir. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the legal bills approximately... $37,000, were paid through Toronto law firm Bennett Jones, where Pudiev's campaign co-chair John Baird works as a senior... Oh, my God. The plot just thickens, doesn't it? <laughs> it just gets better by the minute. I am <laughs> stunned. No, you're not. <laughs> I actually know this oh, one. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Okay. I... I Really? Not surprised. Anybody. Really? Really? Uh, Let's pay the whistleblowers $37,000 in legal fees. Let's do it in four different payments just to make sure that, like, there's four opportunities to spot it if somebody's going through the records. Let's, um, then let's not wonder about if, whether this is a conflict of interest in any way, shape, or form, even though I have a lifetime compliance agreement with Elections Canada for doing funny things with money in a campaign. And then on top of that, let's use my campaign co-chair's law firm. No conflicts. No, to pay no. that money and make sure they get the cut on the legal. Are you freaking kidding I, I don't me see a now? conflict at all there. I don't see any conflict. There's no conflicts there. At least use another freaking law firm. Again, these are not the brightest people in the world. I mean, they can't even crime correctly. It's <laughs> Ottawa. It's not like there's a lack of lawyers. Yeah, there's a lot here. He can't that's, even crime that's, correctly. That's just lazy. <laughs> that's just so damn sloppy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not. It's it. I, you know what? There's a part of me that half expected something like that. Honest to God, honest to God. Part of me that half expected something like that because it's all layered and interconnected with one another. <laughs> You're flabbergasted. It's just so dumb. <laughs> I know. It's like who's who, who runs comms like, for these people? That's when you are really making sure you absolutely no matter what get your cut is the number one priority because that's mm. the only thing that could lead to this an obviously so bad decision yeah i yeah. am like i just <laughs> i am stunned huh? i mean i don't think that they're great at this kind of stuff but i thought they were a little bit I, you have a complaints agreement. You'd think that's the one thing, the one thing you'd make sure was shored up at all times. Okay, well, listen, okay, I don't care what greasy stuff you do, do whatever like this, but do not do anything that make violate that compliance order. That's the one thing you don't touch no matter what. Nothing ever, no, do not do that. Anything else is for a game, but don't do that. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Kids and cubbies, I'm back from taking my male ox and my Pepto. On with the story. <laughs> I swear. Right. The legal bills, approximately $37,000, were paid through Toronto law firm Bennett Jones, where Polyev's campaign co chair John Baird works as a senior advisor. Robert Staley, who was the Polyev campaign's lawyer and now oversees the party's fundraising arm, also works there. And I was within the same paragraph, and I was so floored by the first part that I didn't realize that the second part, that one other sentence, was even worse. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Staley did not reply to questions. Ah, uh, see why, girl. From the star, Barrett said he had no knowledge of the payments. That could be true. I that could be true. Yes, yes, because Camp Baird just works there doesn't mean that he was an intermediary. He just, yeah, he just no, no, happens no. to work there. 
and, and I don't expect them that, to know. Plausible. Yeah, it's very plausible, right? But here's and, the thing. Here's the thing. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. The optics are really, really bad. Yeah. And given how Baird is close to Harper, I would see something like that being arranged in such a way that, like you, like he, you keep him clean. <laughs> but I'm sure Baird's sitting at home now, going, "What the? Do you realize the picture this paints of me now?" Especially after and, being taken out from the, out of the woodshed. Yeah, just the other day. And bending the knee instead of telling him to go f himself. And now this comes. I bet he would have loved this story to come out before he put that tweet out, blaming the CPC for having manipulated his. <laughs> Unless there's a tweet that comes out that says that the Toronto Star manipulated the fact that he oh, brings God. it. I, I, we got to we got to wrap up shortly. I gotta I gotta go take care of something. So let's okay. let's uh, let's wind it up with the story, and then I have one graphic to show you, and then we'll uh, we'll be on our way. The first payment related to Jodoy was earmarked in Polyev's financials as, oh, as the question you shall receive. The first payment related to Jodoy was earmarked in Polyev's financials as, quote, elections issues matter through 2022 20, Election <laughs> issues matter. It's probably election issues matters, but I guess there was a. It's a matter. No, it's a matter. Board. Not necessarily matters. It's a matter. Okay. Election okay. issue matter. Okay. And was paid to the Toronto firm Raymond. Uh, I'm going to go with Beichman. Hmm. Here. The Beichman of that firm is Jason Beichman, the lawyer who would later issue a statement on behalf of Jodoy, laying out her role in the story. Beichman has not returned requests for comment from the star. I wonder why. Hmm, the, that sounds peculiar. Mm -hmm. The other three payments described also as quote, elections issue matter, election issues matter, for the months of July, August, and September of 2022 went to Loopstra Nixton LLP. Beichman switched to that firm in July 2022. The managing partner of the firm also did not return an email from the star asking about the payments. Jodoy has not returned requests for comment from the star. Well, that I can definitely see mm. why. At the time, her concerns about how her expenses were paid came to light. Jodoy had said she acted alone. Quote, Miss Jodoy expressly rejects any suggestion that she was coerced or pressured by others to come forward and did so of her own volition. End quote. The statement from Beichman on July 7th, 2022 said that Jodoy was working on the Brown campaign so surprised no one. Her roots in the federal party go back decades, and she also worked on numerous federal conservative elections at the regional and national level. At the outset of the... Con Yes. I'm just, you know, it, she's saying she wasn't coerced or coached or anything, but all I can think of is that, you remember when Maxime Bernier's girlfriend uh, was interviewed about the uh, top secret documents he left at her apartment? Mm -hmm. And she said, he called me up and said, you you didn't, you remember, do you remember that interview with her? Mm -hmm. Where he tried to coerce her and tried to gaslight her into something? Mm-hmm. You want to bet this was rolling down that same track? Uh, I have no evidence that it has here, but I put... A betting man? <laughs> I put nothing, but the world needs more skeptics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think David Moscott posted that the other day. Yep. I was like, mm, yes, yes, yes. Um, at the outset of the conservative leadership race last year, she had been trying to get another candidate on the ballot, former conservative MP Leona Alislev. When that failed, she approached the Brown campaign. She had helped on his 2015 bid for leadership of the Ontario Progressive Conservatives and his 2018 run for mayor of Brampton. She worked with the campaign for a few weeks, but in late May told them she had to leave to be with a friend whose husband was dying, an account she also gave the star last year. It wasn't until after she was gone that the Brown campaign was told by the party that someone in their ranks was raising concerns about how they were being paid. Over a fevered few days in late June and early July, Brown and the race organizing committee would go back and forth over her allegations, which she later laid out in a bombshell statement issued by her lawyer two days after Brown got the boot, because you always have to know how to make an entrance, kids. Her identity had not been made public until then. She said the Brown campaign brought her on as a regional organizer and told her it would be okay for her to be hired by a company as a consultant and the company would have her volunteer on the campaign. 
That's a common setup for election staff. Keep their day job, work on the campaign on their own time. In her statement, she said she trusted the arrangement, but then when she approached Brown in June to asking to be paid for expenses, he was surprised she hadn't been, had he had the company pay her bills. Election law states that campaign expenses can only be paid by campaigns and the money used to pay those has to be donated only by individuals, not companies. Having a third-party company pay bills could be declared a corporate donation, which is illegal. Like having the conservative campaign fund pay for whistleblower legal fees. It's just so greasy. Maybe. Perhaps. Speculatively. Speculatively. Just asking asking. questions. (laughs) In Brown's campaign version of the story, when Chaudoy approached them looking for work in the spring of 2022, they couldn't hire her. So Brown got a friend to give her her job, and any campaign work she was doing was supposed to be on her own time, as is custom. The full extent of the back and forth between Brown and race organizers remains under wraps. They accused of making excuses instead of providing evidence that the deal struck to hire Jodouin wasn't against the law. He insisted no laws were broken and said if she was doing campaign work on company time, he'd pay them back. The issue, compounded by other concerns the party had about Brown's membership sales breaking the rules, led to a vote on July 5th by race organizers to disqualify him. Brown declined to comment when contacted by the star. He has denied the allegations he broke any laws or party rules. In a statement, his campaign said, As the recently re-elected mayor of Brampton, Patrick Brown is focused on those important responsibilities and has put party politics behind him. The state of the legal investigation in the Jodoy matter remains unclear. The file was referred to the Commissioner of Canada Elections, but the office is refusing to provide any information about the status of the investigation to the STAR, citing the confidentiality provisions of the Elections Act, as it is mandated and as it always will do. Stephanie Levitz is an Ottawa-based reporter covering federal politics for the STAR. Follow her, or, uh, follow her Twitter at Stephanie Levitz. The end. How's that for a story, kids? That's a pretty good one. Oh, this could be bad. I think this one might have a sequel. Uh, There's a very good opportunity for a sequel there. Yes, Yes. indeed. Mr. Grizzly, you said you had something before we have to go. Uh, I have a, I have a, um, a graphic here. I want to show you. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Bear bear with me for a second here. So this, um, it's just a minor little footnote about, uh, the ability to read a t-shirt. Oh, look what he's staring at. Mm. For those of you listening at home on the audio version, it's uh, at a Pierre uh, Poliev uh, prime ministerial campaign, which is not a thing, by the way, there's no election he shouldn't be campaigning. Elections Canada should slap his wrist for it. But one of his rallies, there's a gentleman with a backward baseball cap and a, and a beard who's wearing a black T-shirt that says, let's go, Brandon. And Pierre is staring directly at it. The T-shirt, not the man. Mm, laughing and smiling. And... Yeah. Shit given now. How many times are we going to let him get away with I didn't read the t-shirt? Well, I have another one for you here. Do you want to see it? Bring it on. One more t-shirt. Now, he's not looking at this one, but eh, he's standing there smiling while they Mm. take their picture together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't see that one either, eh? No, didn't see that one. No. No. Smiling and, oh, yeah, I'll take my photo with you. Okay, let's wrap it up. You got stuff Getting to tired do. of him. Getting yeah. tired of him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, kids, that's the end of this episode of The Daily Beaver. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Uh, of course, sharing is caring. And you have the mouse that we want the good word to be coming out of. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us because democracy is something that you do. Uh, Please, if you can donate to the Red Cross to help your brothers and sisters who will be suffering as a result of the wildfires and floods, 
Uh, hello, Nova Scotia. Flies. We see you. Oh, boy. It's the worst parts of the Bible. Fires, floods, evacuations. Holy crap. Uh, oh, boy. I'm not laughing. I'm just exasperated. It's I like they just keep getting hit. Mil- 250 millimeters yeah. of rain like before 6 a.m. this morning. Well, this morning, today, on the 22nd. It's like, yeesh, hoi boy. Uh, if you really like this podcast, you can find us on uh, Google, Spotify, Apple, everywhere that is Beef or Grizzly friendly. Uh, if you happen to be listening to us on Stitcher, it is going to become a dead app on August 29th, by the way. Uh, yes. So please uh, make uh, arrangements to switch over uh, before that happens because we don't want to lose you. We care about you. Yeah. <laughs> we want to keep you close. Uh, of course, retweets, shares, gentle corrections, constructive criticism, compliments, requests, and positive reviews are always welcome. And uh, you can send those to us via our Facebook blog page, True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed, our Twitter feed, our Twitter feed at True Eager. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and our email address, the True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. Um, if you love us so much and don't want to miss an episode, well, you know, we're not afraid of commitment, so uh, make a commitment to us. Go to our pod please, page. Please do. At, please do. Yes. Podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters, uh, with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that way, uh, we will come to you when we have something fresh off the bandwidth. That little squiggly under my chin is where you go if you happen to be watching, and you can scan a QR code, and I'll bring you right there. And uh, if you want to subscribe twice, because we're so nice then you can do that at our youtube page just a little if you're watching there's that little subscribe button down in the in the bottom right hand corner of the screen right beside mr grizzly or mr beaver wow i mixed our, up our names wow, i did that guy. yesterday yeah you did yeah you did. <laughs> yeah there's a there's the little the little subscribe button it's our logo if you click on that you can subscribe to our youtube page and the more subscribers we get the better we can produce content because eventually we can uh, help offset our costs because right now we're just we're we're in we're in the red. We're not in the black. We're not. We need we need to get some money coming in so we can pay some of these bills down because our between our bandwidth costs and our hardware costs and our subscription costs, it adds up. So mm-hmm. yeah, any way you can help us, we really do appreciate it. So I'll put up that little link to our coffee account right up top there, and if you can hit subscribe to our YouTube, we'd be very very appreciative. Absolutely. So, Kit Elaine. I know we're pre-recording, but I hear you. Smash that button. <laughs> and if you love us so, so, so much, really, 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 and you really want to show it to us, well then, buy us a cup of coffee. Or some Guinness. Or Caesar. Or hot chocolate. Yes, you can go to our coffee fund. That's ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver lowercase letters all in one word and uh, that's where you can make your contribution and uh, give us a little add a beaver and add a grizz and uh, let us know that you like what we're doing we appreciate it very much uh, from the beaver lodge this is your eager beaver and mr grizzly saying until next time dear kids it could be a tough world out there so please be kind to you and gentle with yourself mr grizzly some words of wisdom please <sighs> yeah um if you can donate to uh, the Canadian Red Cross, uh, I'm going to put a shot on the screen right now that um, this is just one simple photo of Nova Scotia right now and, and how horribly they've been affected. There's a road washed out. There's flooding everywhere. I mean, they had these massive fires. People have been offset. One of my uh, former colleagues uh, lost his home recently uh, in, in the wildfires uh, outside of Halifax. So, yeah, there, there are people suffering. We, we have a GoFundMe. We've, we've way surpassed what the goal was, and that does help. But what you need to understand is, yes, he's insured, and yes, he will get paid. But it takes months because there are thousands of applications in now, and there's not a, enough agents to help out everyone. So mm-hmm. they'll get some emergency money. We got them some emergency cash, but we don't want the, the poor guy to wipe out his entire life savings mm-hmm. because right now they got to find a place to stay until they can rebuild their home and all they had was the clothes on their back. And again, we've helped taking care of them. Uh, uh, my, my employer started to go fund me to help them out. So we've far surpassed what the goal was. So that is good. Mm-hmm. But he's just one person out of hundreds that have lost their homes. Right. 
and even more so with the recent flooding. So if you can help out, please do so. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, tens of thousands have been evacuated, and uh, there's a dam uh, that's been risking Overflow. risking to breach. Yeah. So uh, there's a warning out there. So there's a potential potential for this to mm-hmm. get much worse. And rain is expected to continue well into the afternoon on the south shore and possibly until Sunday morning on the east. So and like I said there was already 250 millimeters that fell by 6 a.m. Yeah, we're recording this on Saturday, so yeah. you know between now and then it could get much worse. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. And before we go, just a little congratulations to the Canadian women's water polo team who won their match against South Africa at the World Aquatics Championships and move nice. on to the round of eight. Uh, so one of the top eight uh, water polo teams in the world. Way to go, ladies. Way to go, ladies. And uh, swimming starts tonight. Competition starts tonight with uh, the 200 Summer. for women so uh, and the 400 freestyle for men. And then a couple of other things. So, but this is Summer and Maggie are there. Penny isn't, though. I don't think I, Penny's still no, recovering I think she's injury. Time off. Yeah, yeah. yeah I she, believe she, so. she injured. Me. But hey, Summer and Maggie, they're gonna they're gonna take home all the medals. And and Josh. And Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so here's the beauty of it. There are always surprises. The, these these young women who make up Team Canada have inspired every young female swimmer in the country because mm-hmm. when they see they can do it, I can do it too. It's just going to, they are going to produce generations of, of metal winning swimmers. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So and remember, go. Summer's only 16. <laughs> She's no. only 16. No, she's, she's getting started. Is it is. She is. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. All right. Go, Canada, go, go, Canada, go, go, Canada, go. Right. Like it. See ya. <laughs>